Hey, good morning, brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors. I'm Brother Paul with the Universal Peace Officers. I have Brother Jake here with us today, and today we're doing a Genesis Revelation. Jake, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing today? Doing good, brother. Just to let our audience know, I want to give you a quick overview of the Genesis Revelation format. We're basically taking a look at the world through the lens of Scripture. And today, you know, Jake and I had kind of pondered and meditated for a couple of days on the topic of why is the world so messy? So today's topic is why is the world so messy? So we're going to look at that from the lens of Scripture. And Jake, I just wanted to offer you a minute to kind of see uh, anything that comes to mind that you had thought about or talked about over the last couple of days since we uh, initially set this up. Yeah, uh, so one thing that kind of comes to mind for me is, you know, you look at the world today and you look at the book of Revelation just in general, side by side, and there are a lot of similarities, a lot of similarities. I, I do believe that you know, we're, I don't know if we're, per se, in the end times this year, next year, but I do think in the next 10 to 20 years, I mean, we're looking at a lot of prophecies being fulfilled day by day kind of what comes to mind to me yeah from a revelation perspective you know I've, I've spent probably more time in the last six months going back and forth between reading revelation and genesis and i try to read like one chapter a day and i've been going back and forth and uh you know you it's funny you were mentioning that because i've seen some things where i think a couple of the first and the second seal may already have been opened in my opinion you know and the first seal being covid and the second seal talks about we're trying to take the peace from the earth and I certainly see that going on all over the world right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every day. Um, I mean, you look at Israel and Gaza, look at Ukraine and Russia. I think all of that plays a big, 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 especially Israel and Gaza. I think it plays a big role in uh, Revelation. Yeah. Why do you think the world is so messy? Well, I think it starts with love and peace and the okay. lack of yeah uh, and you know what is what is love to me uh love is truth that is the the most i guess uh full picture of love is truth and yeah I think it's missing in today's world a lot uh, i think that you know even with our governments and the citizens and this is just about every government right you always get pieces you never get the full truth yeah ain't that the truth and i think that plays a huge role in it uh, yeah and then second you know you don't if you look at the world 60 years or even 50 years ago okay uh, yeah you know 50 years ago my grandfather tells the story of 50 years ago he could walk into his neighbor's house and grab the salt pillar because he was missing salt. He didn't yeah. have it. You do that today, you're gonna you're liable to die. And right. you know, a lot of people don't even know their neighbors. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah. So I, how I can you love that, thy neighbor if you don't know thy neighbor's name? Exactly. Exactly. And do you think do you think we should be surprised that the world's messed up? No, not at all. Not at all. I Why think, not? Uh, because the book tells us that in the end times, the, the world's going to be messed up. It's going to be war. It's going to be a lot of hate. It's going to be a lot of misinformation. I think Revelation does a good job of depicting that. That's what we're living in today. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I'm going to kind of flip the script a little bit and give you a little bit of something that's kind of come to my mind over the last couple of days. And it's going back to the beginning. You know, we asked the question, you know, Please. why is the world so messed up? And, you know, I've, I've done a lot of reading in Genesis, you know, and I look at whether it's Adam and Cain and Abel or Rebecca and Leah, Jacob and uh, his kid, Jacob and Esau, you know, Abraham, Sarah, Hagar. So all through Genesis, it seems to me God's chosen people were lying, conniving, deceiving, cheating, everybody, including people in their own family. So I look at that, you know, and, and the fall, you know, the fall of man. So from the very beginning, 
God kind of told us these things. <laughs> and then we go through life and we get to where we are and we look around and why is everything so damn crazy? And we want to blame it on this. And we want to blame it on that and all the current events that are going on, which very well are messed up. But I think the answer is all the way back to the beginning. And I think the trouble that we are experiencing now is the same trouble they were experiencing thousands of years ago. And somehow through the bloodlines, all the evil and the people in power and in control are still in control. And they're just, you know, they look differently. They dress differently. They act differently. And a lot of them we don't even see because they're so above our pay grade that we just don't even know what's going on. That's I know it's kind of weird. That's my opinion from from that perspective. And I'm, that's 110 percent accurate, 110 uh, percent accurate. You know, you wouldn't. From that perspective, we wouldn't be anywhere where we are today without the beginning. Without and what? They, yeah. Said, we, we wouldn't be anywhere today without the beginning. The beginning is necessary, though. Again, I'll go back to fulfilling that prophecy. I mean, the prophecy is told in the very beginning. It's always been told. Um and I think that a lot of events back then, for instance, the, the fall of man, well, taking yeah. that out from the very beginning, it's all been to fulfill that prophecy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, without all of that happening, we wouldn't have a need for necessarily a savior. Right. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's interesting you bring up Genesis. Uh, so I've, I've been doing a little bit of looking into Genesis myself over the last few months. Right. And so Adam and Eve. And I don't mean to turn this into a circus show. I'm not trying to turn this into a circus show. Yeah. But what do you think Adam and Eve would have been like? What do you mean? You know, well, you know, so we're we're made in God's image, right? We're, we're made to, to be like God, right? So, you know, over thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years, in simple terms, a lot of that Adam and Eve's bloodline has been uh, dumped down, I guess, or watered down is a better term of phrase. Right. Uh, so what do you think they would have been like in the beginning? Well, physically, they would have been probably pretty cool and ideal and perfect. You know, mentally, I think they would have been maybe curious like kids or like little puppy dogs. Mm. Spiritually, they would have been hungry and they would have been maybe wanting to see and learn. And then they got a taste of the, the forbidden fruit. Boy, we know what happens after that. I don't know. That's, what do you think? I, that's a good question. I never really thought of it from that perspective. Um, I don't know. I think there's there's two sides to the coin, right? So they either were very, very, very curious and wanted to learn or i think another way that you could look at it is uh you know maybe they weren't all that curious maybe they had a lot of knowledge in the beginning maybe they knew yeah. a lot. if they're made in god's image and in the likeness of god my guess is you know they were they were one with everything they probably could have looked at a plant a certain way and touched it a certain way and made that plant grow a certain way at a certain speed um I think that when you have that kind of knowledge, you have that thirst for more knowledge, which also would, if you can already do all of these things, imagine, that's kind of, kind of my thought on it, maybe. Yeah, you kind of gave me an interesting line and in something I'd never thought about, you know, and, and perhaps, you know, just taking what we're talking about and trying to delve into scripture you know god told them they got the the tree of the knowledge of was it the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil yes sir yeah, i don't know so i guess that was i don't know man where they messed up or where they went wrong and in, in their journey other than of course eating of what god told them not to and prior to that did they had that knowledge or was god trying to give to i don't know man that's a deep question right, that would we'll have to shelve that for another topic man we'll have to come back and revisit that i wanted to just kind of follow up uh on everything we're talking about i did a little uh under our genesis revelation playlist the other day i did a little short 10 or 15 minute and i talked about second peter and in second peter chapter two it talks about the false teachers 
Yes, sir. And, you know, when we kind of, everything we're talking about now, why is the world so messed up? And I think we've kind of clarified that from the beginning it's been messed up. And then, you know, if you take a look at the false teachers that Peter was writing about, all the religious leaders and the false teachers, and it really breaks down all the crazy stuff they were doing. And I kind of looked at it from the perspective, like Bill Elder taught us, you know, what was going on, who wrote that chapter, who were they writing to, and how can I take that lesson and apply it to my life? And when I do that and I replace the false teachers with all the people that are leading the world today, the religious leaders, the education leaders, the political leaders, the media, the entertainment, the celebrities, they're the ones that we look up to as teachers where we get our information. And boy, are they giving us some false information. So I think a lot of what was happening back then is still happening now. And I'm going to just kind of parallel one more. Matthew 11 talks about the genealogy of Jesus, you know, from Adam to Jesus and through the lines. And all through that family tree, there's all kinds of rascals and characters and knuckleheads. So back to it was messed up in the beginning. Jesus' family was messy. Why shouldn't we expect the world and our families to be messy? Mm. Mm. That's a good point, Bob. That's a good point. And, you know, I, I think I think you would be very naive to not expect that. Yeah. To not, not expect messy. Um, that's that's a really good point. Um, one thing we got to remember. Go ahead, keep going. Come on. Uh, well, so you know, I think that also kind of goes back to to that. Lack of love, that lack of children, politicians, the celebrities, yeah. the people yeah. in power, the people in the left power, always is giving the little bit of information, but not the whole truth. And a lot right. of it's not even real information. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of my yeah. thought on that. Yeah, whether it's misinformation, disinformation, half truths. One thing I want to come back on, because we're talking about why the world's messy, and we've been talking about from Genesis to Matthew to Revelation and all the stuff we see with the false teachers and what's going on. But let's not forget the promises that God made that when we love him and love others and we walk in his truths and we follow his teachings, he wants to give us the ability to have that peace and that heaven here on earth and then let our light and love shine out so we then can share our love and our light with others and be peacemakers and be light bearers. And God's called certain one of us, ones of us to do that. And, in, and especially right now with everything that's going on in the direction I see things heading in our country and in the world, there's no more important time than we stand together as brothers and sisters in the Lord and God, as we understand them and unite in prayer and in love and in embrace one another and stand up for one another and encourage one another. And remember that God told us it would be messy, but he told us to fear not. I've overcome the world. You know, don't let your heart be troubled. So let's just try to remember as brothers and sisters to encourage one another and let God's peace come into us. Take time getting centered, getting grounded and trying to be at peace with God, peace with yourself so you can be at peace with other people. Absolutely. And, you know, it's actually it's interesting you, you bring that up. That kind of reminds me of uh, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, a lot of people hear that story and they think, wow, you know, God, God destroyed a whole city. Right. Uh, how can God. Right. Really not what that story is about. It's actually the story of a loving God. Because you know, before before that, multiple times, God on multiple times. You know what? Show me people that are good, and I'll save the city. You know what? Show right. me twenty people that are good, and I'll save the city. Yeah. You know what? Show me one person that's good, and I'll save the city. One person. One person. So I think that that also kind of shows the importance of you know. Right now, we all need to be together and be the good. Um, show the love, show the peace, spread it. And in doing that, we don't necessarily, I mean, we do save the world in a lot of ways. In doing yeah. that. We save the people, um, which is a really, really, really important thing to do is to spread peace, love, and positivity. Amen, brother.
Amen. And I, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Let's kind of kind of wrap up today. We're getting a little bit of technical interference. I hope some of this came through, but, but I want to just piggyback on what you said and just remind everybody what our foundation is. We're trying to spread peace, love, and compassion through prayer so that we can help God save the world by changing one heart at a time. And the peace officer's prayer that I just want to leave with everyone today is God fill me with peace, love, and compassion. And God fill my family and friends with peace, love, and compassion. And God fill all the earth and all of humanity with peace, love, and compassion. And just wish a God bless America and a peace to everyone. And Jake, I want to thank you for taking the time and look forward to our next episode when we get a, get a chance to get together and take a look at the world from the lens of scripture. Absolutely. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, brother. Peace officers out.